recording. I'm going to maximize the screen and then obviously I'm going to share. <coughs> so today we're going to talk about solving linear equations. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define everything that we need. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to define things like a variable term, a constant term, a coefficient. Uh, we're going to talk about the additive property of equality, the multiplicative or the multiplication property of equality as well, because all th these are all tools that we need to understand how to solve an equation. All right. And mo more importantly, these steps that I'm going to give you will apply from now until you are done with math. So basically when you're dead, they're not going to change. Okay. So if we want to start off, we could start with something really simple. Okay. Like something like this. X plus one equals five. Now I think we're smart enough in this, in this class that we can kind of guess what that answer is. So if we're looking at this, what number plus one equals five? Well, that number has to be four. Okay. So X equals four. But the question becomes, is there a systematic approach to actually solve that problem? For example, if we looked at something like this, all right, this problem right here, it's a little bit more difficult to guess to figure out what the answer is. Okay. So we're going to look at a, a systematic approach, a recipe on how to solve this. But before we can do any of that, we have to go ahead and define some things. So the first thing is something that we've already looked at. So our first definition is just what's an expression. So an expression is a Mathematical sentence or statement. I'm going to write the word statement. I like that better. So an expression is a mathematical statement that contains the following items. Now, it doesn't have to contain them all. It'll contain at least one of them, though. So the first one. Are what we call constant terms okay so that's the first now I'll explain what terms are in a second when we actually look at what an expression is the second thing that an expression has would be variable terms all right now here's what makes them different constant terms are only numbers so like three negative five, 1.23, seven over eight. I mean, those are all constant terms because they're just numbers. Variable terms are like three X, negative one half Y, even just the variable itself, Z. Okay, these are all variable terms. Now, variable terms can be broken down even further. So let, we're going to take 3x, for example. So first things first. This is red. 3 times x. So whenever you see a number and a variable smack up against each other, the implied math operation is multiplication. Okay? Now the 3 <coughs> has a special name. That is called... A coefficient all right that is different from a constant a constant is a number by itself a coefficient is the number that is being multiplied to the variable and that's the name of the X so the X is called a variable all right now a variable just in case you didn't know is an unknown quantity. Okay, a variable is an unknown quantity. 
So, so far, an expression is a mathematical statement that contains the following items. Constant terms, variable terms, and the last thing. Are going to be math operators and there's only four of them and you already know them plus minus put a dot for multiplication and then the division symbol and i'm just those are just abbreviated that's all okay now let me give you an example of what an expression looks like here's a simple one three x plus five Okay, now terms, I'm going to write this in red because this is really important. Terms, regardless of which one, constant or variable, doesn't matter. Terms will be separated by addition uh, signs or an addition sign or a minus sign. So, for example, 3x plus 5 has two terms. Okay? 3x plus 5 has two terms. Are there any questions so far? All right. Let's look at another example real quick. So 2x plus 4y minus 1 half has three terms. Oh, calm down. Calm down. Just the cats. Sorry about that, everybody. <clears throat> now, the next thing we're going to learn how to do is we're going to learn how to combine like terms. Does anybody know how to combine like terms? That's a good question. Any ideas? All right. Well, that's the question, though. How do I know what things I can add together? Or how do I know what things I can subtract together? And, the, and a better word is, how do I know what terms I can combine? That's really what we're asking ourselves. When I say how to combine like terms, I'm asking, what can we bring together? So let me show you an example here. I'm going to be using 3x a lot here because it's stuck in my head now. So we got 3x plus 5 minus 7x plus 2. Okay? Now, I'm telling you right now, I can combine like terms in this problem. All right? The ones that I combine, initially, if I'm just taking this for what it's worth... I can combine variable terms with variable terms and constant terms with other constant terms. Now, the constant terms thing, that's easy. It's the variable terms I really need to be careful about. So before I give you the rules, I'm going to show you just this example and another example, and then hopefully we can see the difference on why we could do one thing, but we couldn't do the other. <clears throat> so real quick, if you just want to watch, it's fine. But what I'm going to do is directly above each of them, I'm going to label what type of term it is first. So that's a variable term. That's a constant term. That's a variable term. And lastly, that two is going to be a constant term. So I know, and I'm telling you right now, you can do this. We can combine the variable terms together. So an easy way to think about this, and I'm going to write this off to the right-hand side. So it's going to be like my scratch work over here. An easy way to think about this is that 3x minus 7x. Like, you can combine those two things together. In fact, what you're really concerned with is just what is 3 minus 7. That's really what you're concerned with. Because no matter what, the term itself is going to have the label x associated with it. So 3 minus 7 is negative 4x. A way that I kind of look at this, and it's kind of it's kind of uh, dorky, <clears throat> is that the three x and the seven and that minus seven x, 
I think of them as being in the same family. And what I mean by that is the three has a, or the, the, the first term, and I'm going to draw some arrows. So that three is its first name, the X is the last name. And what you're doing is you're bringing family members together. That's it. So I, I look for other terms that have a, the same last name because that's really what makes you a family. Like we have people in this room right now with all first names like Robert, Alex, Kylie, Travis, and so forth. What really separates you is your last name. That's how we can kind of identify who we're talking about. Same, same principle goes here. So the three X and then the minus seven X, they have the same last name, which is X. So I can bring them together. So all I'm going to do directly underneath is write minus four X. Now I'm going to group the constant terms together and that's really easy. So five plus two is seven and it's positive. So I put plus seven. And that's how we combine like terms for this example. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to look at another problem. And it's going to look very similar to this. Okay, looks very similar. I have variable terms, I have constant terms. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The only terms that I can combine together in this example are the plus 2 and the minus 5. That's it. So this result is going to be 5x to the second power minus 3x and then 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So here's the question that I want to ask. How come in the first example, I can combine the variable terms, but in the blue example, the second example, I cannot. And if you can answer that question, then we can define or we can look at how do we actually combine like terms. Exactly. So Alex nailed it. In other words, this this 5x to the second power and this negative 3x, they have different last names. The 5's last name is x to the second power. However, the negative 3, their last name is x. So notice they're different. So to sum everything up, how do we combine like terms? To combine like terms, you must pass the following two criteria. One, and this pretty much goes without saying, you got to have the same variable. The second, and this is the most important one, and this is the one that sometimes we forget. We also must have the same exponents. Okay? Same variable, same exponent. If you could put a little check mark next to both of these, you can combine them. If you can't, you cannot. It has to pass these two criteria. Are there any questions about that? <clears throat> All right. I'm going to give you a couple examples then. Go ahead and simplify that for me.
Okay, did anybody get an answer yet? I got 7x plus 27. I like it. So let's go ahead. Let's go through this real quick, okay? First thing, I read it from left to right. 5 times x plus 19 minus negative 4 plus 2x. So I see the double negative back to back. I'm, all, I'm just going to rewrite the problem and make that a plus before I do anything. 5x plus 19 plus 4. Oh, yep, plus 4 plus 2x. Now, from here, the 5x and the 2x both have the letter x, and they are both raised to the first power. That's good. So I'm going to combine them together. So that gives me 7x. In other words, 5 plus 2 is 7. Now, the constant terms here, 19 plus 4, that's just going to be positive 23. All right, let's try another one. Please try that for me. All right, what do we get for this one? Anybody got an answer for this yet? I got negative 1x minus 27. Minus 27? I'd be careful with the minus 27 part. Oh, wait, no, no, you're right. I'm wrong. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I wasn't thinking. You're right. So, first things first, let's dissect this problem. Number one, I'm looking for variables raised to the same power. Right here, I see an x. And right there, I see an x. And they're both raised to the first power, so that's good. The problem is, the x, the very first x is actually contained inside of parentheses. So, I need to remove the parentheses first. And the only way to do that is to use my distributive property. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply. And how I do that is I take two and I multiply two times X and then two times negative five. Okay, are there any questions there? Are we all on the same page? So let me write, let me write that above here, distributive property. All right, now I rewrite everything else the way it looks. And now that I removed my parentheses, I can combine like terms. 2x minus 3x, so 2 minus 3 is negative 1x. And then negative 10 minus 17. Good job, Alex. Negative 27. Now here's the thing. Alex was very specific with what he said, and I, I don't disagree with him at all. He said negative 1x minus 27, okay? Now, here's what's happening here. When I write 2x minus 3x, when I was showing you initially how to do this, I wrote this in parentheses. I put 2 minus 3 with an x outside. So 2 minus 3, last time, you know, last time I checked is negative 1. So if you wanted to write negative 1x, that is completely fine. However, you don't have to put the 1. All you really need is just the negative symbol out front. That's it. In other words, if you write down x, I assume you got at least one of them. If you have more than one, you would tell me that by multiplying it times that number. 
Are there any questions so far? All right. Next definition. An equation is when there are two expressions equal to each other. So in other words, you're going to have an expression which we know is a mathematical statement that contains variable terms, constant terms, and math operators equal to <clears throat> another expression. Now, some of us may have an idea on how to solve this, but I can guarantee you this. We always tend to make a mistake on one of the steps, and it's going to be step three and step four is where we make our mistakes. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you an example of what an, what an equation looks like. And we already did one earlier, so I'll just rewrite that. So here's an example of an equation. Notice we have the expression x plus 1 on the left-hand side. And then on the opposite side, or the right-hand side, we have equals 5. And another thing we did is we looked at this and we said, okay, we can guess what the answer is. In this situation, x is going to equal 4. The question becomes, how do we do that? A lot of times you can, you can just look at the problem and you can tell me what x equals. However, if you can't just look at it and tell me it, you got to at least have a game plan on how to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the steps to solve. And then I'm going to define things inside these steps. Okay? That's going to take some time for us to write. So steps to solve linear equations in one variable. All right, so there's a lot of information already in that first statement. And this is just the title. First, linear equations. A linear equation will contain variables raised to the first power. Okay? So I can have as many variables as I want, but if they're all raised to the first power, that's considered a linear equation. Now, I'm being very specific here. I'm giving you steps to solve linear equations in one variable, which means you're going to have one variable. You may have multiple copies of it within the problem, but they're all going to be the same letter. They're all going to be like X or they're all going to be Y. I'm not going to have you solve equations like X plus Y equals 2. That's a linear equation in two variables. you learn that next semester. Okay? So here we go. Step one. If fractions are present, multiply both sides of the equation to reduce, oh, sorry, multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. to reduce all denominators. In other words,
What I want you to do is get rid of all the denominators. Just get rid of them. How do we do that? We mult oh, sorry. We multiply by an LCD. Okay? So that's step one. <clears throat> Are there any questions with step one? Now, you may have to do step one. You may not have to. It all depends. Every problem is different. What is not different is the technique. Step two. If parentheses are present, use the Distributive property to remove them. So this distributive property, I'm going to write it directly underneath. So the distributive property looks like this. What it says is that if you have a number out front of a parentheses and inside the parentheses, you have multiple terms. It could be two. It could be four. It could be a hundred terms. Doesn't matter. If you have a number out front of a set of parentheses with terms on the inside, <coughs> what you can do is you could take each one of those terms and multiply by that number. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to write this off to the right. So I'll do two little examples here. So three times two plus six. Well, that is the same as saying three times two plus three times six. All right, you could do that. So what do we get? Well, if we just simplify the right-hand side, three times two is six, three times six is 18, and six plus 18 is... 24. If you were to do the same exact thing, but on the left-hand side, we know from the order of operations, you got to do the work inside the parentheses first. So that's going to be three times eight and three times eight is 24. All right. In other words, if you see parentheses, use this property to remove them. Are there any questions with that? Are we sure? Okay, step three. This is the biggie. You're going to combine like terms on each side of the equation. I'm going to use the word separately. Okay, here's what we mean. We're only going to look at the left and combine like terms on the left. Then you look at the right and you combine like terms on the right. So I'm going to write that in red. Look at only the left side of the equation. and combine like terms. Do the same for the opposite side. Okay? This is where students make mistakes. They're too quick to start moving things around, which is step four, and they forget to do step three. Or... They don't understand the difference between an expression and an equation. 
An equation has sides, left and right. An expression does not. Because an equation contains an equal sign. All right, are there any questions so far? All right, step four. Am I moving too fast for writing or, or is this an okay pace? Because like I said, it's a lot of writing. But once you have these steps, you're good. <clears throat> All right, so step four. You're going to use the addition property of equality. And I will define what that is. So you're going to use the addition property of equality to separate variable terms and constant terms to opposite sides of the equation. All right. So here's what this is saying. All right. You're allowed to have variable terms on the left and constant terms on the right, or constant terms on the left and variable terms on the right. We don't care. What we care about is that they are separated. Okay. Now, here is the addition property of equality. And the crazy part is, most of you, I would say, already knows this. It's just maybe you didn't know it actually had a name. And it's called the addition property of equality. So it states, if A equals B, then... A plus C equals B plus C. Or, if A equals B, then A minus C also equals B minus C. In other words, and like I said, you already know this. So maybe, who can I, who, who can I pick on here? Who can I pick on? Who do I think might know this? I'm going to say... Hmm. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jessica, can you unmute yourself real quick? Yeah. Now, if you don't know it, it's fine. But what I want you to do is finish this sentence for me, okay? Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you see, you already knew it. That's called the addition property of equality. If you add a number to one side of the equation, you must add it to the other side. If you subtract a number from one side of the equation, you must subtract it from the other side as well. And that is what the addition property of equality looks like. All right? Step five. There's only two more steps. Step five and then step six is really small. So step five says... Use the multiplication property of equality to simplify the variable term. All right. <clears throat> so... I can rewrite this entire statement with giving you a direct operation to do. So in red, here's what, here's what it should say. You're going to divide both sides of the equation. by the coefficient of the 
variable term. So in other words, whatever number is in front of that variable, divide both sides by it. And that's what the multiplication property of equality actually says. So let me give you that. So the multiplication property of equality just says this. If A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. So in other words, you can multiply both sides of the equation by any number you want as long as it's the same number. Or if A equals B, then A divided by C also equals B divided by C. But C is not allowed to equal zero because we cannot divide by zero. So in other words, you can divide both sides of the equation by anything you want as long as it's the same number. And step six is just check. To check, you will substitute your result into the original equation. And that's it. Those are the six steps. If you know these six steps, you will ace any type of equation problem I give you. Because they're all done the same way. You will just walk through each one of these steps. <clears throat> So there, well, I can't even put them all on one screen. But then again, I wrote a lot. So are there any questions before we actually start doing some examples? All right. So I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. And we're going to solve the following problems, okay? And we're gonna do the very first one that we did at the very start of class that I gave us, that we guessed on. X plus one equals five. Now, you're probably gonna get really bored of me saying these steps over and over again. But my goal <clears throat> is to A, get you to realize that these steps exist, and then B, maybe, when you're taking your test or you're doing your homework, you actually hear me inside your head saying these steps. So I'm going to re I'm going to re I'll be repeating the steps a lot. <clears throat> Here we go. Step one. If fractions are present, find an LCD and get rid of the denominators. I don't see any fractions here. So step one is done. Step two. If you see parentheses, use your distributive property to remove them. I don't have any. Step two is done. Step three, combine like terms on the left, combine like terms on the right. So right here is the left-hand side of the equation. I have X plus one. They are not like terms, so I cannot combine them. On the right-hand side, it's just the number five. There's nothing to combine there. So step three is done. Step four. I need to get the variable terms on one side, constant terms on the opposite side. And I use my addition property of equality to do that. Now, my goal in step four is to isolate the variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the left-hand side because that's where the variables contain, and I'm just gonna read it, x plus one. So my goal here is to take the plus one from the left-hand side of the equation and I'm gonna move it to the right-hand side. Now, I can't just get rid of the plus one because it's there, it's part of the equation. But what I can do is move it to the opposite side. If you, if you want, you can kind of think of this as like a balance. And right now, x plus one is on the left-hand side and five is on the right-hand side and everything's equal, okay? 
Now, in order for me to keep everything equal, but move the positive one from the left over to the right, I will end up subtracting one from both sides. Now, watch what happens. On the left-hand side, one minus one is zero, so that one is no longer there. It's only the letter X. And on the right-hand side, technically, and I'm only gonna show this maybe once or twice, on the right-hand side, <coughs> you get the five minus one. So what I did is I took it from the left side and moved it to the right side. Everything is still in balance. Now, five minus one, I can do that. I can combine them. And that is how we got x equals four. So step four, or step four is done. Step five would have been dividing both sides by the number in front of the variable, but the number in front of the variable is a one. So that's done. And then lastly, step six, if you wanted to, just check yourself, take your result, substitute it back into the original equation. Four plus one is five. Are there any questions? Because this is the easiest problem we're gonna do. All right, let's do another one. Negative three times X plus 25 equals four. <clears throat> so this problem I think is a little bit more difficult some of us may be able to look at it and say, well, X equals this number. Some of us may not, and that's fine. In fact, I don't even waste my time trying to guess. Guessing is for, I don't know, old people in the mall that look at how many gumballs are inside a stupid, you know, container, and then you win some cash. That's guessing. I don't want to guess. I hate guessing. I got better things to do with my time. So I follow my steps. Step one. Do I see fractions? No. I'm done. Step two, do I see parentheses? No. I'm done. Step three, can I group anything on the left? The answer is no. Can I group anything on the right? The answer is no. So I get all the way down to step four before I can even do anything with this problem. Step four, variable terms on one side, constant terms on the opposite side. Right here is my variable term. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to take the 25 and move it to the opposite side because 25 is a constant term and so is the four. So to do that, what I will do is subtract 25 from both sides of my equation. So on the left-hand side, you have three X because positive 25 minus 25 is zero. And on the right-hand side, 4 minus 25 is negative 21. <clears throat> so now step 4 is done. I got the variable terms on, on the left, constant terms on the opposite side. Step 5, I look at the number in front of the variable, which is a negative 3, and I will divide both sides by negative 3. Now, from fractions, we know negative 3 over 3, they reduce to a one, so that gives me X. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 21 divided by three is seven. Are there any questions? All right, I'm gonna give you one to do now. Here's yours. Negative six equals negative three X plus nine. Go ahead and do that for me, please. Hmm. 
All right. Did anybody get an answer? Say, I'm sorry, Alex. Say that again. Five equals x. Five equals x. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's try this. So, step one, do I see fractions? No. Step two, do I see parentheses? Not at all. Step three, I look on the left. Nothing I can combine on the left. I look at the right. Nothing I can combine on the right. So, we get all the way down to step four before we could do any work. Step four, I'm going to get the variable terms on one side, constant terms on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. Now, the reason why I did that is because my goal is to isolate that variable term, negative 3x. So in order for me to do that, I'm just going to move the constant term to the opposite side. So on the left-hand side, that gives me negative 15. On the right-hand side, that gives me negative 3. All right. Are there any questions so far? Okay, good. Step four, I'm sorry, step five, we're going to divide both sides by the number in front of the variable to give me x equals positive five. All right, so these problems, now hopefully you have a grasp on them, not too difficult. I'm going to start throwing some more things at you now, okay? Here's our next example. So we have 2x plus 10 plus 3x equals negative 12 minus x minus 20. So let's go ahead. Let's look at this one together. So step one, I don't see fractions. Good. Step two, I don't see parentheses. Good. Step three, can I combine any like terms on the left? So I look at the left. And it looks like I definitely can. I can do 2x plus 3x. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to add 2 plus 3, which is 5. Last name x. Now that plus 10, I can't do anything with that. So I just rewrite it. Now I look at the right-hand side. Negative 12 minus x minus 20. I definitely can combine the negative 12 and negative 20. Since the signs are the same, I add them and keep the sign. So 12 plus 20 is going to be 32. So I keep the sign. And that minus x, nothing happens with it yet. All right. Are there any questions with what I just did there? That was step three. Now step four. <clears throat> Where do you get the variable terms on one side? Constant terms on the opposite side. Now, hopefully you're looking at this and you're going, well, I have a variable term on the left side and I have a variable term on the opposite side. My thing is this. You can choose to move anything you want. In other words, you can move the 5x, you can move the 10, you can move the negative 32, or you can move the negative x. Nobody cares. The only thing we care about is did you do it properly? Did you follow the math rules? So somebody please unmute yourself and tell me what to move. Pick 5x, 10, negative 32, or negative x. It's your choice. All you're going to do is tell me. I like that, Alyssa. So I'm going to go ahead and move the negative x. Now, for, for me to move negative x from the right-hand side of the equation to the opposite side, I have to add. In other words, I look at the sign in front of the number or in front of the variable, and I just do the opposite side, the opposite operation. So since it's minus x, I'm going to add x to both sides. And I only do one step at a time. So I come straight down. 5x plus x is going to be 6x plus 10 equals negative 32. <clears throat> now, 
from here, I need to get the plus 10 to the right hand side. In other words, now that I got the variables together, I am forced to move that plus 10. I don't have any other options. So I do the opposite operation, which is going to be minus. I get 6 times x equals negative 32 minus 10. Signs are the same, so you combine the numbers. Keep the sign. Equals negative 42. Okay? My next move here is step 5. I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by the number in front of the variable. The 6 is reduced on the left. On the right-hand side, the easy part. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. 42 divided by 6, you actually have to know that. I think it's 7. Okay? Now remember, you can always check yourself. So let me show you. I'll, we're going to check our answer here. I'm just going to rewrite the problem. In fact, let me use a different color. Now, I'm choosing to check this uh, check this answer for a reason. And that's because you got to remember, when you make substitutions, put them in parentheses. So what I like to do is rewrite everything first. Wherever I see the variable x, I put parentheses. And then I make my substitution. Negative 7, negative 7 and negative seven. And hopefully you can see why I choose to do it this way. It's because if you look on the right hand side, I have a double negative back to back. So I gotta be careful with that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this one step at a time. I'm gonna draw a little red line. And we're gonna simplify the left hand side first. Then we'll simplify the right hand side. And when we should get the same exact result on both sides. So 2 times negative 7 is negative 14 plus 10. And then 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. <clears throat> now, if I just go from left to right, negative 14 plus 10 is negative 4 minus 21. And negative 4 minus 21 is negative 25. So if I've done everything correctly, I should get the same exact result. Okay? So on the right hand side, well, first thing I'm gonna do is just rewrite it so that double negative is a positive now. Now I'm gonna take negative 12 plus 7, and negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5, and the signs are the same. So I combine the numbers and keep the sign. And I get negative 25. So because these match, I know my problem or my answer, x equals negative 7, is correct. Does that make sense, everyone? All right, I hope you're really appreciating or understanding the very rigorous step-by-step -step approach to solving equations. They're all the same. This is how you do it. Okay? Now I'm going to give you one to do. How about you try this one? Go ahead, try that one for me.
Okay. Uh, did anybody get an answer yet? It's okay if you didn't. These kind of take some time. Six equals Y. Okay, let's see if we're correct. So I'm going to just walk through the steps. And notice if you know these equate are these problems so far, we haven't even got to one where it requires all the steps. We will eventually. We'll get there. So step one, do I see fractions? No. Step two, uh, do I see parentheses? No. So that's good. Step three, I'm going to look on the left-hand side and combine like terms. So on the left-hand side... I can combine 40 minus 16. So what is 40 minus 16? 24. Good. So that gives me 24 plus 4y equals. And on the right-hand side, 13y minus 12 minus 3y. So I can definitely combine the 13 minus 3y. So 13 minus 3 is 10. Last name is y minus 12. So now that I'm done with step three, step four, let's get the variable terms on one side, constant terms on the opposite side. CJ, what did you move first? Uh, so what I did was I moved the negative 12 and added it to 24. All right, that's what, that, that's what, you know what? I'm going to do something else. Is that okay? I'm going to do minus 24 from both sides. That's what I'm going to do because I want to show you that you still get the same result. So on the left-hand side, I get 4y. On the right-hand side, I get 10y minus, now, signs are the same. Add the numbers, keep the sign. So minus 36. Okay? Now I am forced. I have to move the 10y. Because I got to remember, variable terms on one side, constant terms on the opposite side. So I will subtract 10y from both sides. Now, 4 minus 10 is going to be negative 6y equals negative 36. Step 5, I divide both sides of my equation by the number in front of the variable. So, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 36 divided by 6 is 6. So, CJ, excellent job. How, how are we looking so far, everybody? Is it pretty straightforward? All right. I'm going to give you some more things to do now. Next example. Thirty-five minus seventeen equals three times the quantity x minus two. <clears throat> All right. Step one. I don't see any fractions. So far, we've avoided fractions this entire time, and that's good. Step two. If I see parentheses, use the distributive property to remove them. Now, I definitely see parentheses. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract 35. Or I'm moving too fast. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the three by multiplying it to every single term, and that will remove my parentheses. So three times x is three x, and three times negative two is negative six. So now step two is done. I have no more parentheses. Step three, I look on the left, and I'm, I, I try to combine like terms. So 35 minus 17, what is 35 minus 17? Good. On the right-hand side, there's nothing I can combine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do step four, get the variable terms on one side, constant terms on the opposite side. So I'm pretty much forced to move the positive six or move the six by adding it to both sides. Uh, 18 plus six is 24. And that's going to equal 3x. Now I divide both sides by 3 to give me x equals 24 divided by 3 or 8. Now once again, if you wanted to, 
You could check yourself. All you have to do is go ahead and uh, take your answer, substitute it back into the original problem. And what I like to do is rewrite it. So wherever I see the variable X, I put parentheses first. And then I will make my substitution. And as long as, as long as my answer is good, we should get the same thing on both sides. So on the right-hand side, that's pretty simple. Or I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, we get 18. On the right-hand side, 8 minus 2 is 6. And 3 times 6 is also 18. <clears throat> All right. Are there any questions? All right, you get the one. You you get one to do now. Let me see here. Try to switch it up a little bit. Try that one for me, please. Okay, anybody get an answer yet? Five. X equals five. All right, let's see. So uh, first thing, no fractions. That's a good thing. Second, do I see parentheses? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead, use my distributive property to remove them. All right, so I get three times X. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 minus 12 equals 0. All right. Next step. I look on the left-hand side and ask myself, can I combine anything? The answer is yes. So I can combine the negative 3 minus 12, which is minus 15, equals 0. Step 4, I'm going to take 15 which is a constant term and move it to the opposite side. So that's going to give me three times X equals 15. And lastly, divide both sides by three 
to give me x equals 5. Any questions there? All right. Here comes the fun one. We'll do a couple of these and we'll call it a day. And then next week we'll pick up where we left off. We'll start off simple. All right. Now, there's, there's a bunch of different ways we can approach this. But regardless, step one, if you see fractions, get rid of the denominators. Now, for us, luckily, my denominators are 13. In other words, they're like denominators. And that is very, very good for us. Okay? <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead... And I'm going to multiply by my LCD. Now, since all my denominators are the exact same number, that number is going to be the LCD. So watch what I do here. Let me write it a little cleaner. I'll write it like this. All right, so all I did is I took 13 and I'm going to multiply every single term in my equation by that number. Now, we're just going to go left to right and we're going to keep it simple. 13 times y, nothing you can do there. You just write 13 times y. The next one, I'm going to write off to the right here. Now, I can't stress this enough. The whole reason why you chose the number 13 was so you can eliminate denominators. In fact, if you go back to, to rule number one, it says multiply by an LCD to remove fractions. So if that's the case, then your first move should be to simplify the denominator. In other words, we know this 13 out front is really 13 over 1. And I have a 13 in the numerator and 13 in the denominator. So they just simplify. Look what number is left over inside the parentheses. It's a 2. So I'm going to write minus 2. Does that make sense, everybody? What I just did there. All right. Next, let's worry about this. You see this negative in front of the 13? I'm not going to worry about that yet. In fact, I'm just going to tell you, just drop it down. What you're concerned with is what is 13 times 3 over 13. And like I said, the whole reason why you chose 13 was so you can reduce the denominator. You can get rid of it. 13 over 13 simplifies. Inside the parentheses is a 3. So on the right-hand side of the equation, you get minus 3. Therefore, step one is designed for you to eliminate denominators and make your equation look like any other normal equation, <clears throat> excuse me, any other normal equation that you've already worked with. That's what it's designed to do. All right, from here, follow your steps. Step one is done. Step two, no parentheses. That's great. Step three, look on the left. There's nothing I can do on the left in terms of combining. On the right, there's nothing I can do on the right. Step four, let's get the variable terms isolated, constant terms on the opposite side. So I am forced. I have to move the two. So that's going to give me 13y equals negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Okay? Step five. I divide by the number in front of the variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 13. And that's going to give me y equals negative 1 over 13. Nobody said 
and I never said this, I never said all of your answers are going to be nice whole numbers. I never said that. All of your answers are going to be solutions to that equation provided you followed your steps. All right? And like I said, an easy way to check yourself wherever you see or wherever you see the variable, put parentheses and then substitute in your solution. Now, if we look on the left-hand side, denominators are the same. So write it once. Write your numerator once. Negative 1 minus 2 is minus 3. So you get negative 3 over 13 on the left. On the right-hand side, it already just says negative 3 over 13. Are there any questions with that? All right, I'm going to give you one to do now. I'll give you one just like this. So go ahead and try that for me. All right, so B shared an answer. B said the answer should be Z equals, I'm going to write it here, Z equals 9 over 14. And I messaged her back and I said, that's what I was thinking. So let's see if my thinking and the process that B used is actually correct. Step one, do you see fractions? Yes. So what we're going to do is multiply everything by the LCD to eliminate the fraction. What's nice about this, our fraction is 14. That's what our denominators are. So I multiply everything by 14. Now remember, the entire reason why you chose 14 is so you can do what I'm about to do right here. 14 over 14 is 1. So it simplifies down just into 1 times 5 or just 5. Equals on the right-hand side. The 14s reduce again, so you're left over with 4. Now, step 2, I don't see any parentheses, so I can move on. Step 3, I can't combine anything on either side. Step 4, I'm just going to add 5 to both sides of my equation. 4 plus 5 is 9. And then lastly, I'm going to divide both sides by 14 to give me Z equals 9 over 14, which is exactly what B said. Good. All right. Last problem of the day. This one is going to have the same feel as, as all the other ones, except I'm going to change it up. All right, so X minus one half, or I'm sorry, X minus one twelfth equals five sixths. Now, here's an example where we have fractions, 
We know we need to get rid of those denominators. However, the denominators are totally different. One's a 12, the other is a six. So we need to find the LCD for this. Now, hopefully you remember how to find an LCD. So 12 is really just two times six. And six is gonna be one times six. So my LCD is gonna be the product of factors that are unique, two and six. So my LCD is gonna equal 12. Now, I'm gonna multiply everything by 12 and I need you to just to watch. This is really important. So everything so far seems pretty vanilla. We've been doing the same exact thing. 12 times X is 12 X. In the second fraction, we know the 12s are going to reduce. What's ever left over inside the parentheses is going to be what I write. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. However, if you understand how to do this, it's really not. So off to the right, watch what I write here. I'm going to do 12 times 5 6. However, I'm going to take a note or a lesson that we learned a long time ago in fractions. And I'm going to rewrite the 12 as 2 times 6. The reason why I chose 2 times 6 and not like 3 times 4, because remember, 3 times 4 is 12 also. The reason why I chose 12 times 6 is so I can do this. I can scratch out my denominator. And I write exactly what's left over. I have a 2 out front and a 5 inside parentheses. 2 out front, 5 inside parentheses. All right, so let's recap real quick. I had to find an LCD, it was a 12. I multiplied everything by 12. Everything was pretty easy, everything was pretty standard until I got to the right hand side of the equation which is 12 times five over six. So what I did is I rewrote 12 as two times six and the reason why I chose that is because I have a six in a denominator, remember, our goal is to get rid of that denominator. So I simplify it and I write what's ever left over, two times five. Now, fractions are gone. I don't see any parentheses. I guess I do. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could multiply two times five. So we might as well just do that. Two times five is 10. Cannot combine anything on the right. Can't do anything on the left. Step four, I'll get my constant terms together by adding one to both sides of my equation. Step five, I will divide both sides by 12 to give me X equals 11 over 12. And that's it for today.